Hey there, gang. So recently on stream, I was challenged by a good friend, the one and only Rossberger, to attempt a challenge that seemed probably to him unbeatable for the likes of me. He requested that I try to win a match as clown on Gideon Meat Plant, sending myself there using no perks and no add-ons. Now, this is actually something that I would consider to be very difficult because remember, Gideon has a whole bunch of pallets that have zero counterplay and must be kicked. At least four, probably five pallets minimum. And further, these pallets aren't really spread out. A lot of them are close together. So one who commits too much into a chase that they otherwise shouldn't may end up losing a whole lot of generator progress from the rest of the survivors on the team because you're just going to get chained pallet to pallet to pallet to pallet. And with Without anything to support you in chase, without anything to support you slowing down the generators, you may end up losing too much generator progress to come back from that. So a big part of surpassing this challenge and winning, killing three to four survivors, means that one must know what chases to take, which pallets to kick, when to not commit to a chase, and further keep in mind it's not as if the survivors I'm going against are not running perks. They are able to bring med kits with syringes, styptics, they will have decisive strikes, exhaust exhaustion perks. Anything that they can think of is allowed for them. Meanwhile, I'm not allowed anything whatsoever, but I was up to the challenges. I am up to many challenges, and we ended up, by surprise, doing a lot better than I expected. I'm not going to exactly spoil the outcome. You all have to see for yourselves, but one thing that does kind of stand out is that we did succeed this challenge on our very first try. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this match. I found it to be personally very, very exciting. All right, now y'all, this is going to be a really, really, really hard one because we don't have like anything. I'm going to be blind as fuck. I'm going to be slower than usual. I'm not going to be missing out on my awe with the awe from the coup, but mm, so let's see. Already off to a good start. We're playing against the bot lobby. They're going left. There's a door this way, I can already tell you. You're gonna give me power possession. She really wants to leave. Not bad. Y'all notice I have these double bottle combos set up even regardless. We're gonna rotate around the hard way. You have to play 50-50. I gotta hit that, that's on me. That's on me. Admittedly <laughs> very good on her part. Man, will you fuck off? Man, can I pay you five dollars to fuck off? He's literally going through the fucking thing. Meg, you must think I'm a fucking aw. Meg, you must literally think I'm a fucking aw, alright? She genuinely thinks that I'm a fucking aw. Mia also thinks I'm a fucking aw. You know, we could have probably grabbed her if I was ready for that. I guarantee you this Meg is Deli. She has to have Deli. There's no way she does this without Deli. This literally is the most obvious fucking deliverance play I've seen in my fucking life. How did I not hear? She's still at the fucking tile? I think I still get this, maybe. She has to have gotten the yellow. She has to have gotten the yellow. Y'all are actually tripping right now. Medal of Man, by the way, that has to be Medal of Man. Nia has to have Medal of Man. I'm already calling it. Nia's a fucking aw, dude. She's also a fucking aw. Uh. 
I just want to get those pallets out the way for later. <laughs> Gotta rotate, dude. <gasps> Strong free run. <laughs> Basement's down here. We're in a basement. Actually, we might lose this gen. Probably should have considered slugging and kicking. That gen's gonna be done probably before I get back up. I don't know. We might be able to, but we're gonna have to prep a yell yellow for this. No, we got time, we got time. She doesn't. We're gonna come back in 60 seconds. She has unbreakable. That was unbreakable, FY. No one was able to pick her up. She has unbreakable. see shit from these survivors <laughs> like post game holy shit we're about to hit two gens fy we're gonna be hitting two gens very soon Yo, we've almost fucking 8-hooked them. We want to hit this pole? Still regressing, nice. Go back this way, actually. Go back this way. Yo, we're about to hit, actually, one gen. We're about to hit one gen. Someone's gonna get her and I won't be able to contest that. Oh wow, that actually drops just like this. Uh, why am I even 
I'm thinking that's not gonna matter. Thank you. They have to have DS so this is a hook. I mean, gang, I'm out perked here, am I right? I'm literally out perked here. You know, I'm literally out perked here. Holy fucking shit. I should have another staircase back up. I don't know about this one. There's no way she has DS, right? Yeah, she doesn't, so. Carry back this way. Ain't no way he is right here. He ain't back there, maybe. There she is. Y'all see her, actually? I just saw her. Oh, uh, that's... Okay, that's really not fair, simply because the, the game... Y'all saw that, right? I didn't know how to react because I got fucking bugged over there. Alright, let's try this again. Rolling double bottle combo, except I got a terrible bloom. That's fine, we get her now. shit y'all are actually pulling it off we are literally almost pulling it off it's this chin Russ, what do you have to say about this? Russ, I have surpassed your challenge. We pretty much almost eight hooked him as well. We want six to seven hooked him. I have surpassed your challenge. Get in. No perks, no add-ons. Hell, we're we gonna make this a fucking 4K? We're we gonna make this a fucking 4K? We all who put that fucking box right there with the edge? He's gonna go wide. Got him. 4K. Ross, I have surpassed your challenge. You knew I could do it. Thank you. Thank you. I was a little bit nervous myself, to be quite honest. I was pretty nervous myself. Give them something spooky. Thanks! Oh, you're way too kind, Ross. The way my mind is just blown. I mean, it was a, it was a nail biter for sure, gang. Talk about a nail biter of a match. And people say I'm dependent on Q. People say I crutch on Q. Are you gonna say 
say that and leave? How are you going to say that and leave? Was my build too strong? What was the problem? Nancy, you got a mega clapped. How are you going to say that? <clears throat> Ain't no way. Ain't no way. <laughs> Dude, you know, you know they stayed around to see the build, y'all. You know they stayed around to see the build. Like, look at their perks! <laughs> so as I mentioned before, on a map like this without any perk or add-on support, there is no chance that I would be able to win against survivors that have access to full loadouts if I committed to every single chase that I could. I needed to basically set things up for later on, and I needed to also create injury pressure in order to hopefully catch survivors out while they were injured, especially out of position, and then get hook pressure as a result of that. If I decided to, say, chase the Nancy, or if I chased it even the Meg, or any of these other survivors, we would have gone from pallet to pallet to pallet. Pallet, I would have spent anywhere from maybe 50 to 60 seconds per health state and by that point you're looking at two survivors guaranteeing a gen that they need to complete you're looking at multiple generators having 50 to 60 percent completion if those generators also had partial progress before said chase began those generators would have been completed there would have been nothing that i had to rely on to slow the game down there would have been nothing i could rely on to stall out the match with respect to generator progression as a whole and further again there is nothing i would have had to make these chases faster and even if i did to be quite honest because it is Gideon me plan and how a lot of these pallets have zero counterplay it really would not have mattered my win condition came from getting free injury tags hitting survivors when they were out of position going for unhooks or just in dead zones getting those injuries and then breaking chase if they give me a strong pallet very quickly within 10 to 15 seconds kick that pallet break chase because once I'm able to get these survivors for the injury tag out of position if they can't rotate to these pallets in order to stall out the second health state even further that's how I would get any type of snowball and that's how I would get any type of lasting objective pressure right because my objective is hooking these survivors so that I can kill them I need to get three hooks and that starts with one and two right so that means that I can't just commit to every full chase that I get because even even if I do that, even if I commit to a long standing chase against a survivor, especially one that's not on death hook, they still got two more hook states. And further, look at these loadouts, gang. We've got one survivor with off the record, which means that in order to counter that, if I really wanted to hard commit, I'd have to camp. And if I'm camping with no perks and no add-ons, right, that's even further. We're looking at multiple generator progress completed across every other survivor. We had two survivors with decisive strike. Nancy in particular had decisive strike and unbreakable, which I did come out. I did say she picked herself with unbreakable, which I did through pure game sense. And this meant we had to rely on that strategy I mentioned. We had to go for that split pressure. And it was a result of that that we were able to win the game because I did get some of these key pallets kicked. I did commit to some survivors that were already injured. And as a result of that, that was how we got a lot of the hooks that we really desperately needed. Because if we, we really genuinely, and I do mean this, if we did try to commit to full chases, we would have probably at best killed two survivors. And I really don't even think we would have had that. Survivors can complete multiply, you know, across the team, two to three generators in one and a half chases. We're talking 90 seconds per survivor without any toolboxes whatsoever. And if they grouped up, they would finish one generator in a single chase. So that means that if they grouped up on some of the remaining generators, that would be one hook state per generator. And we really desperately could not count on that happening. So the fact we were able to pull this off, I'm very happy and pleased. And, you know, it was because of how we respected Decisive Strike that we were able to even do as well as we did. Nancy may have had Unbreakable, but there was a time where as well with the Nia, we chose to uh, respect it earlier in. And Decisive Strike, keep in mind, is I believe it was four seconds at the time of a stun duration. And every stun second is worth the equivalent of about 4.6 meters per second without taking into account bottles. When you looked at how we committed toward a generator that was being worked on by the ACE, that means that the stun duration means we would have lost equivocably 
anywhere from 16 to 18, maybe 19 meters of distance. And that generator, when we caught up to the ACE at one point, was so close to being completed. If I would have decided to get greedy to pick up the survivor that had DS, it was either Nancy or Nia, to avoid that stun, that generator would have been done. It would have been done. And while I do need to play, as, play into attrition to begin with, being able to get that injury split pressure, which I did, pushing them away from the generators, stalling things out, that's the only reason we stayed in the game. We needed to get survivors killed and we needed to keep them off generators. And the best way that we can do that in our position is to injure them. Injuring survivors means that even if they stick to generators and they do finish the generator right before I get to them, I can still get a nice and easy chase typically, especially if, again, I'm not picking a lot of these long-standing chases going for survivors for two health states that have access to pallets that go pallet to pallet to pallet to pallet. We kick these pallets early, we get them out the way, we look to get some injury pressure. If we catch them out while they're still injured, that means that we are able to get these downs. So that was really how we won this game. And I really genuinely do believe if we played any differently, this would not have happened. So I hope you all really enjoyed this match. I found, hope you found it very insightful, very intellectual. I don't think this is a standard that should be expected with regard to every match you play as Clown on Gideon. Gideon is a very tough map for Clown. While it has its advantages when it comes to being able to rotate around the map itself, because it is a vertical map instead of horizontal, which means that one can use the holes and the staircases in order to go from floor to floor. Keep in mind that the strict number of pallets that are available that have zero counterplay that is the problem with this map it's why i'm not really the biggest fan of it it was only because we played into survivor mistakes and quite honestly survivors underestimated us there are a lot of pallets where survivors chose to greet and or play them that strictly could not be played while pre-drops so that was how we were able to really win this game if you're curious how to learn play, how to play clown better and also to do what I was able to do, I have a very detailed clown guide that I'll be sure to link in the description. And similarly, I stream live on Twitch during the weekdays. So if you want to see matches like these personally, if you want to actually challenge me yourself, especially with a uh, subscription bill request, I'll have a link to my stream in the description as well. But other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time. Later, gang.